go through on a daily basis for the town, which is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Andy? Yeah, I'll just be quick because it is getting late. Um, you know, I early on withdrew the motion that I had presented because I felt that uh, the substitute motion here addressed significant pieces of what my concerns were that I expressed. So that's one thing I wanted to say. The second thing is that I'm actually a little uncomfortable about completing this tonight in part because I noticed one place where the committee charge, which is listed as a part of substitute motion one, has an inconsistency with what's said earlier in the motion. And if I noticed one just reading through it right now, I worry that it might require, given its length and the complexity of the two, the charge which is built into the motion and then the motion itself, to make sure that they really do agree with each other in totality. Um, and the specific one that I'm talking about is the appointing authority um, is slightly different in the committee charge versus in the motion. The um, other thing that I just wanted to note is that the whole subject of um, develop, developing a proposal for repair is a complicated subject. And I think that uh, the maker of the motion and drafter of the motion um, did a good job of trying to recognize the complexity of um, setting that up. But I don't um, think that we should minimize for ourselves in thinking about it because there are a lot of policy, financial, legal issues that are involved there. And uh, this is not going to be uh, a simple matter. So those, those are the things I want to point out. Michelle? I see that Allegra has her hand raised. Would it be um, permissible to allow Allegra to speak before I speak? It's, it's really a town council discussion at this point. And I hate to do that, but I really feel we need to respect that it's a count town council discussion. Okay. Um, so I wanted to address some of the things that have come up. First being um, Anna's uh, concern about the um, recommendations that were already offered by the CSSJC, I really do feel like that is a distraction here. It's innate that if we are having the CSSJC as part of this process, that the recommendations that they have suggested will be voiced in that process. So this, there is nothing about this that is negating the recommendations that they have already made. In fact, it's saying, we value the recommendations that you have made and we want to include you in this process. And so I wanna be very clear about that. Um, I also wanted to address um, something that Shalini said, um, which was confusing to me. Um, on one hand, uh, she said that we have a DEI director that we've hired to do this work. Um, and I think this DEI director has clearly said that she believes that reconciliation is the way forward. She put that very clearly into her last report. But at the same time, Shalini says that we should hire a consultant to do other work. Um, and to me, that is a contradiction. Um, so I want to point that out very clearly. Um, I do think to Mandy's point, um, and maybe this was the point of uh, Deb as well, that what are we going to do with this? So yes, we are taking a leap of faith here. We are doing something that is different than what we normally do, that requires us to give up control and power, and that puts this into the hands of the people that it belongs to. 
And when I hear, you know, I, I just, I heard somebody, I can't remember, I'm trying to take notes, say we could use them in motion number six. This isn't about using people. This is about their voice being central to th these matters and guiding and advising this town councilor council that clearly cannot get its stuff together um, to to move this process forward. So I'm not going to apologize for being a little worked up here, but I am going to say that you know we are taking a leap of faith here. And yes, Mandy, it's possible that recommendations will come to the council and they won't all be embraced and we will work through that together. But until we can get together and establish some consensus about what happened and include different perspectives and voices and allow the committees that we have created to guide this process, um, I truly believe that these other sort of matters that are coming up about an inconsistency, okay, so we can change and make sure, Andy, um, that the charge and the motion both say that the town council is, um, it, that the, that the um, council president is the appointing body. I have asked uh, and given Lynn and Athena these motions, if there was an inconsistency, I apologize. Um, but I think that's the least of our issues. So I'm asking us to take a leap of faith um, and to work through a process together that I truly believe will um, allow us to go to these deeper, more meaningful um, discussions that we need to have and that we're circling around again and again. So thanks. Alicia. Um, thank you. I just wanted to speak to a couple of things. Um, one, because like I heard some comments as to like this, this motion was too specific, but just to bring us back to the reminder that the entire topic of this entire meeting is the July 5th incident. So like that is what we are addressing with this whole meeting. So this should be specific to that incident. And like repairing that incident and responding to that incident. So that is why this motion is specific to that. But it's also that because the conversation of this meeting, because this is just a piece of a whole, right? Like this is just one incident in a whole systemic issue. So that's why there are other, so many other pieces that are also relevant to this happening. But this is a specific meeting for a specific thing, why, which is why I think this motion is extremely relevant and encompasses a lot of different interests, would encompass a lot of different interests in moving towards a resolution to this one specific incident. And then we will also have other work to do in terms of the structural bigger pieces, bigger picture pieces, um, that is still our responsibility. But I think it's extremely important to realize how critical this one piece of the puzzle is, because I also don't, know if that is completely being recognized that like the way again I think I heard somebody already say that the way that we address this will will establish precedent right like what are we going to do next it will start our path forward like what we do and how we address this and so I think it's really important to realize how this one piece affects the bigger picture and our opportunity to do better and build something better, right? Like that is the point. We're not like just coming here to spew negativity and to be negative because we hate people and we don't like things. It's because we want better. Like everyone wants better. That is the goal here. And to be better, you have to figure out what is wrong and address it and change things. And so like we need that change. And so this is one piece to a bigger puzzle. And all of this is like a, these are all learning moments. And another big learning moment, I think this, this should also represent to the town in terms of talking about town staff and the DEI director specifically and their ability to be involved in something like this. Again, this is a critical piece to the big puzzle. And something so critical absolutely deserves the attention of the DEI director. And I really appreciate the report, the comprehensive report that she wrote before. And that is great, 
but there is an ongoing conversation that needs to happen. And if we agree that that needs to happen, then why would the DEI director not be a part of that conversation? Because I think that just helps her to build her fabric, like that strengthens her in her position. Being part of community conversations like this with people from the community that she is working to fix. Like that is how you build a person in their role and you build their connections in their community and strengthen their ability and their connections and how successful they will be in their role. Like those things affect that. And so I think it would be really smart to figure out how we could make that possible for the DEI director to be involved in something so critical as coming to like a resolution or a path forward from this situation. I think her involvement would be very important as well as of course the other groups, but just because that specific role was something that came of question in this meeting is why I'm talking about it. And then also a learning moment because when we created the DEI department, I don't know if you all remember when the CSWG came to you all with a bunch of budgets last year for the DEI department, for the CRESS department, for the Youth Empowerment Center, and for the, the Cultural Center. And we were told that all of the budgets were way too high and we were criticized and picked apart. And the DEI director ended up with just a DEI director and just an assistant director. Like we also proposed admin staff we also proposed for her to have a budget to actually do things and not just a salary. And all of those things were knocked down. And this is part of the reason why we recommended those things in the first place, because this is a lot of work. This is a huge, very important job. And we realized that this should not be handled by one to two people. They should have staff and they should have more money but they don't. And so like, here we are, this is how we set it up. So can we figure out how to make it work to the best of our ability? I think we need to be a little bit more creative here than just saying like, we've hit a wall, we can't make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, Shalini? Um, I want to speak to the contradiction that was brought up. There is no contradiction about hiring a consultant. Um, because as Alicia just pointed out, we have a DEI department of just two people. And uh, so hiring a consultant would be this um, one-time support that a DI director would have in expediting the process. And secondly, from my understanding and reading and doing research of resident oversight boards, it's a very specialized uh, job. And even though a DI is competent, she may not have the expertise to do a resident oversight board, which is a very specialized job, which spe specialized consultants do. So I would highly recommend that we hire that consultant. And regarding the, it's not, I mean, I know that it was mentioned that, oh, you know, what's the need for a motion when uh, the DI director is already doing that job? I think what we're asking for in that motion is we're signaling that that needs to be a priority. Secondly, what we're signaling is that as a council, we want to allocate, we're willing to allocate funds for a consultant if that is what she needs right now. And thirdly, um, we are also looking at the consultant bringing a fresh set of eyes with respect to the July 5th incident to look at it. You know, we already know what the CSJC, uh, CSJC is asking us in terms of compensation funds. And uh, and so the consultant can look at that information uh, with fresh eyes and uh, provide a perspective that we don't have in the room right now. We've all spoken about this issue from different points of view and bringing an objective point of view could be helpful from someone who does that work because that can also help us look at what were the causes and conditions for the police to have ended up in that place, making those statements, what needs to change in the police processes, you know, what are the procedures that might need change. So we, I mean, what we're proposing is a way forward to fix and address the causes and conditions for what happened, to look at it systemically and to address those changes and to give that power 
to the black woman leader that we have hired um, in our town. So I hope that addresses the contradiction part. Thank you, Shalini. Uh, Lynn did want to raise her hand earlier and put a little note in front of me saying that she can't. So I apologize that I missed you, Lynn. So I'm gonna go Lynn, then Jennifer, and we'll keep going. Lynn? I can't raise my hand while I have all this on the That's screen. It's okay. I, the post-it method sort of worked. Go ahead. Um, my problem with this proposal is not the issue of whether the people who would be proposed here bring terrific perspective and important perspective. My problem is with bullet two, one, I'm sorry, two, three, and four, because without adjudicatory capabilities, there is no way to establish consensus on the factual record of what transpired or afterwards. And without that, you can't establish uh, a, a clear statement of harm and therefore reward it. So I've, I've struggled with this. I mean, Michelle and I spoke about this. Um, and that is my concern about all of this. That's one of my concerns. Staffing is a second concern, a serious, serious concern. The other concern I have is how much of this is also is already embedded in the committees that we have. And to what extent are we just confusing the work of those committees by having a fourth committee? And so I have those three concerns and I think I have a couple others, but that's all, thank you. I, I actually would like to propose the amended six, if I could, um, but I don't wanna be rude to people. And I don't think you can when there's a motion on the floor, right? You can have a substitute motion. Oh, you. Oh, only if she or a simultaneous. Can you have a simultaneous motion? What did you say? Can you have a substitute or a simultaneous? Simultaneous. Can oh, we I consider think. both at the same time? I mean, that would be sort of the substitute motion where the vote is to substitute or not. Then right. let's finish discussion on this. Thank you. I, for on. a second, I thought you said a single lady's motion, and okay. I was very confused. Um, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so I would see motion one, maybe we would also pass motion five or six. I would see, because I am sensitive to how much work is on staff's plate, that maybe the consultant could also work with, and I don't even know if we have, it's an ad hoc committee, so it's not a permanent committee that we're adding. I see it as a way to have a working group between the Human Rights Commission representatives, the African Heritage Reparations Assembly, CSSJC, and counselors, you know, with the liaison from the police department working together on an ad hoc basis. It's not a permanent ongoing committee. And I just personally feel that the testimony that was provided in Mr. Stewart's letter has to be a part of. I don't know, the consensus or the, the record of what transpired. I think that's an important part of repair for the youth to have the full picture to acknowledge what happened that, you know, in those early morning hours. And for that, and that's why I feel that we do have to have some consensus because otherwise we're kind of denying a, a big part of the reality that they experienced. And so I don't know how we move forward with um, repair and, you know, and we need to have a true sort of, you know, for the record, for the present and for history, a full picture of what happened. And I don't feel that we have that now. And I feel that Mr. Again, Stewart's testimony provides an important part, piece of the picture. And for our community, um, and 
certainly for the youth that evening that we owe it to them to have for the written record for the present and history, you know, the full accounting of what transpired that night. And as um, I think Alicia said, we can't fix it until we, you know, fully acknowledge what happened. Thank you. Thank you, Anika. Yes, thanks. So um, I haven't had a chance to speak with Michelle about this, but um, Michelle, I'm sure that you know I I've, I appreciate your intention with this, um, and I see it. My concerns um, that haven't been mentioned, or it, it's late, so maybe they have. Uh, are some of this seems to me that because we have, you know, AHRA, AHRA has ongoing meetings, CSSJC has ongoing meetings, and it seems that wouldn't this work can continue as is within the committees? Um, and as it as it stands now, we have the DI department up there, I guess, splitting time and attending these meetings and liaison role. So if we're doubling down and we have now, it seems like we have, we're extending um, this conversation. So we're mo basically moving it into another room to do all of this work. And I don't know who said about using people, but it seems that six, does the same, but instead of having DEI as a liaison role that they're more centered at the helm. So they're participating and having room to flex their wings and, you know, show us what they were here for. And I and I do believe and agree with, you know, building people and their roles, but we have someone who really is already built. And I think that we need to respect that as well. And of course, this is a new place and a new environment and things are different, but you know, to to give people a, a chance, I don't I feel that this is putting Pamela in a position of having training wheels. And I think that the we need to also allow her voice to be heard. And I don't think that by, you know, moving if we move into another room where that um, the committees here are having double the voice as opposed to we have another a shared space where there may be DEI maybe more at the helm, but it still says clearly they're still pulling from and working with and collaboratively with these with the same groups. That's it. Thank you, Pat. Um. Hmm. I'm concerned um, that we're losing track of work that's already been done by the Community Safety Working Group and the requests built on that from the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. And we're saying, okay, let's now take these many months to do some more work and then we'll give you a report and you'll have to do it the way we say, or we're going to be have worked for nothing where there, there feels like they're an, unintentionally, I feel like there's some kind of trap embedded in here. Um, a, a trap for all of us, uh, not for the council, not for the BIPOC community, but for all of us somehow. I really think that we, I'm, I really think that it is for me personally, I really want to know what happened on July 5th. I would like to talk to some of the youth. I would like to know what happened. I would like to know why the police re didn't send children home with the first parent who was there. I want to know those things and those things are very important. I'm getting off track, I'm very tired, but I think that somehow or other, we're just shoving this down the road and, and unintentionally. And we really, I think, looking at motion six, that seems more reasonable. Looking um, at honest proposal about what parts of the original request by CSSJC, uh, how how do we get them done? How do where do they belong, and how do we get them done? And I think 
I think we're just setting ourselves up again. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not clearer than that. I, I apologize. Need to interrupt, Sean. I've been told we've gone off TV. Amherst Media is still, yeah, they're still here. Amherst Media is still on, which means they're still taping. But are are they still broadcasting? I can reach out right now. Thank you, Athena. Um, I'm looking for counselors who haven't spoken. I don't think there are any. I think you're right. Every um, once in a while. Are we waiting to see if we're streaming? Uh, or have we determined if we're still in there? I mean, we're not, are we required to be on the air to have the meeting? Okay, we, we are going to continue. I'm sorry, we're, I'm still, sorry. we're still streaming on YouTube and they're working on reestablishing the channel. Thank you. I appreciate that information. Um, I guess just keep calling on people. Sure. Uh, so I, my, I'm next on my little screen thing. So uh, I wanted to maybe clarify, and, and I apologize if my word choice was poor, my, my uh, brain isn't firing as fast as it was at the beginning of the evening. Um, I didn't mean negate, Michelle, when I said the, um, what's the impact of this motion on uh, of this committee's recommendations on the ones we've already been given. My concern is that if, if we're waiting for recommendations from this committee, um, you know, are we supposed to act? Are we supposed to move forward with other ones, um, or are we are we waiting until February or whenever the reporting date is out for the kind of the list of recommendations from this this group that is coming together with the purpose of making with one purpose, one of many purposes being to make recommendations. I don't want to undermine that by starting on other work, but I also don't want to delay starting another work that's been that's been recommended to us so that's that's my sticky spot right there and i believe you are next in my uh window Michelle. Hey. yeah um so first i just want to say that every member of the cssjc has supported with a lot of strength this motion so any concerns that I'm dismissing their original, um, you know, recommendations or haven't accounted for them. I don't think we there's a concern there. They've all supported this and have spoken that they would like to see this committee move forward. And I am asking my fellow counselors with all of the concerns that you might have to keep that at in, in the forefront of your mind that the public who have come out to speak and all of the members of the CSSJC unanimously have supported this. So their recommendations as they've already been submitted will of course be part of our discussions. Um, with respect to uh, staffing, staffing is going to be a concern whichever direction we take. Whether we ask the town manager to ask his staff to take this on, or whether we ask the staff to collaborate with these committees, we're going to have a staffing issue, so or a concern or a challenge. I'm, de I'm deeply disappointed um, in Pat's perception that a recommendation to go through a reconciliation process would be seen as a trap. Um, I'm deeply disappointed with that. Um, I think that um, there is absolutely no intention to create a trap here. This was a deeply thought out motion 
um, and charge. And I will also say that in any reconciliation framework, whether you look at the John Jay School of Criminal Justice, whether you look at any reconciliation method, these are the steps. I didn't pull these out of my head. I pulled these out of a framework of nationally and internationally recognized reconciliation models. So while I understand that some of this may be new to us, and while I understand that consensus may seem like something that's impossible for us to get to, consensus is about including and making sure that we've consented that all voices have been heard and represented in the record of what has occurred. We may not agree on the record, and that's not the point of consensus. So um, I'm not going to raise my hand again because um, I'd like to call the question, um, but I also would never do that and shut down voices. Um, but uh, I would like to very clearly say, Lynn, that um, I would like my motion to be acted upon before it gets some other motion comes through. Um, but I also respect the fact of trying to do simultaneous. I also want to say, that I do support um, the the creation and and the immediate creation of the resident oversight and whatever needs to happen to move that forward. Any counselor can bring any action forward at any time. So this committee getting put in place to do this work does not stop me from coming to the next meeting and saying that I would like to put a motion forward to freeze the police. I can still do that. I can do my own research. I don't have to wait with all due respect for Anna to come back and tell me what I need to do. I can figure that out on my own and I can bring that motion forward. And any one of us has the power to do that. Thank you. Since I have my screen down, I'm um, I, I'm just gonna ask, there's five counselors with their hands up. Is there anything else you feel you need to add before we take this to a vote? Andy. I was going to make a motion procedurally if okay. we aren't going to get to a vote because it's getting late. And I think we're we're getting to a point where we've probably lost our effectiveness. So I'll reserve and see if you're if you're ready for a vote, then I don't need to make another motion. Dorothy. I wanted to say I support motion number one, and I definitely would do not support number six, although because I've read it, some of the language in there is embarrassing because the, some of the language is that of white fragility, which tries to say that there's been suffering on both sides, such words as accusations and innuendo. So I, I think that kind of disqualifies that motion. So I think we should move forward and not stall any longer, period. Alicia. Um, sorry, just a couple of quick points. The CSSJC was also created in part to provide support to the DEI position. So that's um, one point. The second is that um, I support this motion because it allows their voice to be continued and centered in the conversation as the town's official community safety and social justice committee. The name speaks for itself. Why would they not be included in the continued conversation? I also think that records are extremely important for history amongst other reasons but more importantly for history and documenting what has happened and what is happening so like that is very important and also we have all of these committees with the same central goal of achieving equity and racial justice and what more important platform would we have for them to be working together because we talk about people doing parallel work all of the time. Why would we not create a space where they could work together? These are all already existing members of already existing things that are happening. We're not pulling new people into this work. This is giving them an opportunity to work together. This is our best path forward that will bring us the most success and includes everybody's voice. There will be a representative from the PD, this community safety and social justice, the DEI director, some town counselors like that sounds like a recipe to move forward. Thank you. Kathy? Uh, just a 
quick comment actually following up on Lynn's um, and Jennifer's concern about getting the facts. Unless we're giving this ad hoc committee subpoena power to get all the film that we haven't seen yet or bring in people for death positions, I'm not sure we can do the kind of fact finding. I'm, I, and I, I'm not proposing we do that, but I'm just saying that, the, but you're saying we have part of the story. So that one of my concerns, as I've said, is this focus is on just the incident. I think six is broader, but I'm not even sure what part, what version of six we're looking at. So I'm prepared to, to vote on the motion, Michelle's motion, and I know how I will vote. Shalini. Um, I keep hearing that, um, that you know we've that the CSSJC represents the BIPOC community, and as we have already seen and heard, that there are other voices, there are other people. So I just want to make make that clear that when we say the people have the BIPOC people have spoken, that yes, a few people have spoken. But as we have seen just with a few other perspectives that have come in from Ms. Faison, Ms. Uh, Dr. Patricia Romney, with Dr. Shirley Whitaker, with we've heard from Dr. Irv Rhodes in the past, and um, including myself as a BIPOC person. And I don't, anytime I say something that is a different point of view, I am discounted, I am rebuked, and I do not feel heard. So to say that this committee is has spoken, the BIPOC has spoken, I am sorry that no, they have not. And the reason we're not hearing more people, again, is because people do not want to go through this being, we are public servants. I am willing to take this on and I'm willing to speak my truth um, because I have sworn to be a public servant. I have taken the bodhisattva vow, which is to speak on behalf of people who do not speak up and to do justice for all, for everyone. And you can call me, you can be disappointed in me and that is fine. But there are many other people who don't want to do that. And that's why we're not hearing them today. And that is the reason why I will not support the first motion because we have tried. We have tried as a council very hard to work towards working together uh, and it hasn't worked. Unfortunately, I'm not blaming anyone. We are equally as fault perhaps, which is why we need to step out of this and allow a person who we have hired to do this job, which is why I will not be supporting this motion. It sounds as if we're ready to move to a vote. Yes. The vote is on the motion, which was on the screen. I'll be glad to put it up again if anybody requests that. Okay, Shalini Balmil. No. Patty Angelis. No. Anna Devlin Gothier. Yes. Mandy Jo Haneke. No. Anika Lopes. No. Michelle Miller. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Is that a yeah. no? Yes. The answer is yes, you're voting in favor, yes? Okay, got it, thank you. Kathy Shane? No. Andy Steinberg? No. Jennifer Taub? Yes. Alicia Walker? Yes. I know. I 
I vote no. And I would like people, if they're willing, to at least look at motion six. I'll put it up. Um, for clarification purposes, can you announce what the vote was? Yes, the vote was seven to five, seven to six. six. Seven, I'm sorry, six in favor, seven opposed. Um, and Anna, we're going to have to go back to you managing because I've got to share my screen. No problem. Okay. All right. Let, can I just say that I actually would eliminate some things from this list uh, or be very clear that they're already in process. And um, the, first, the first one I would say is already in process is this, but the need may be there to hire a consultant. Um, this came right out of one of the other motions. This addresses one of the areas that among the seven demands, actually several of these do. Um, and it involves uh, working with drawing on the ongoing Community Safety and Social Justice and Human Rights Commission and African AHRA Committee and challenges people to make a, to create greater awareness. Uh, this would be a report back to the council within two months on the progress and at any point in time, counselors could still bring uh, items forward. So I'm placing the motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second, Evelyn Gothier. Okay. Comments or questions? Mandy Jo? Um, it looks like you placed the whole motion on the floor. And I'm wondering if it would be a friendly amendment to begin the motion at the town council requests that the town manager working with the DEI department and eliminate everything before that. I accept that. Uh, I will, Anna? I suppose I accept that. Yes, you accept that? Yes. Okay. But only because I believe a lot of this has been covered in past resolutions, even if it's not specific to the issue. Right. That's fine with me. Other comments or questions? Alicia. Um, so I have a question about now it's going to be in the first paragraph where it says the town council requests that the town manager working with the DEI department and other staff. Okay, and drawing upon the ongoing work of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee and all the other committees, does that mean that they won't actually consult them and they will just look at the stuff that they have already done? There's any number of things they could do, including consulting. Let me give you one, uh, what I think is an important example. The AHRA has already had very, very important and informed discussions with the town attorney about how to create a fund and the process, and they certainly can share that either in writing or in person with, in order to do the process to conduct research into the feasibility of a justice compensation fund. That's just one example. Uh, the, uh, several people earlier have mentioned the resident oversight board, you know from your work on CSWG, and the subsequent conversations on CSSJC that, and the fact that Pamela, Dr. Pamela uh, Young has been charged to do this. The question now is whether perhaps it would be helpful to expedite it by bringing in a consultant. Does that answer your question, Alicia? Um, I like it's around answering my question, but I guess what I'm really wondering is, or I guess what I'm saying is that I would feel 
more comfortable with this with this motion if it required conversation with the other groups like if there was language around that and not just saying drawing upon the ongoing work because the ongoing work has been in front of us and we can see clearly how that doesn't always serve and that again it would be more progressive if it was a like a a joint process in which people could like actively participate and not just people are looking at reports and writing so you would like something like here that says discuss and draw discussing and draw discuss and draw upon discuss with discuss with and draw. yeah because i want them to be actively involved in the discussion as like humans there Well, that didn't work. So I added that, but that would have to be acceptable to Anna. It is. Okay. And would you mind saying out loud what's changed? I'm sorry. Can you say would out you loud? Say, can yes. you say out loud what has changed? It's, it's difficult to, add, to read the screen. Yeah, it says working with the DEI department and other staff and just and through discussion, I guess, or and discuss with and draw upon the ongoing work. So we added the words discuss with and and we changed the word drawing to draw. I have a copy of it on Athena. Uh, Pam. Thank you. Um, I, I think what really bothers me about this is that we just had a very long conversation about staff, staff priorities and, and, and overworked staff. Motion number one was a conversation with the groups that are formed to do this work you know, by us, with with assistance and support of town staff. This motion puts this 100% on the burden, the burden on the town staff itself. Oh, and maybe we'll talk with the other committees. This is just not the right. It, 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 it's not the right priority. <laughs> Can we, it, it, it feels like this needs more discussion and some of us are not able to bring out our best selves at this time. And I would like to request adjourning, but I'm happy to take in the feedback from everyone. Uh, the sh let me call on Michelle and Mandy Jo first, Michelle. Um, I just want to support what uh, Pam just said. And I mean, this is this takes staff work to a whole new level. Um, I mean, this is an extraordinary amount of work. And the way that I see this is that this is the option that feels more safe to this council because it keeps it within the control of the town manager and even the council leadership itself um, and doesn't what I was hoping to do in my failed motion was really to turn that power over and to loosen those controls and to give us an opportunity to work with that. Um, this, I, I will support this in some shape or fashion, because if it's all I got, all we got, um, then something's got to budge here and move forward. Um, unless, uh, once again, if we are going to continue this discussion, I'll come back potentially with something else 
at another meeting. So um, I would say that if, you know, um, if if this, I, I, I think to Shalini's point, I appreciate very much. And I, I do want to come back to the point of hiring a consultant if needed. I also want to come back to Mandy Joe's point about reviewing. I know that the police policies have been thoroughly reviewed, um, but uh, had, I'd like to see action on that uh, immediately um, in in really focusing on police policies. I mean, with the Hampshire College incident that just occurred again. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to just say that I can't leave this meeting without getting off my chest is Paul said that Chief Livingstone was one of the best police chiefs in this state, or I'm sorry, Paul, if I'm not quoting you properly, but in some, the essence of what you said is that. And while I personally really, really like Chief Livingstone and find him to be an easygoing and charismatic and caring person, the fact that he has not come forward with an apology a direct and meaningful apology to this community. Um, to me, I don't understand how the town manager can not acknowledge that and not bring that most basic function of saying I'm sorry forward um, as something that should be done and done immediately. And I'm not going to make a motion to ask the town manager to ask, you know, Chief Livingstone for an apology. But I just want to strongly say that those are contradicting um, opinions in my mind. And um, and I think that we don't even have that most basic thing. So, um, yeah, thanks. Point of order. Yes. Uh, Shalini made a motion under Rule 7.1 uh, uh, for to, um, to adjourn. And I believe that under the rules of our council, that that takes precedence over any other action. Yeah. It, it would, but it was not seconded. I agree. Um, Is there a second? Well, I, I would ask that, does she want to adjourn or would she like to postpone this discussion to a date certain before she adjourns? One of the questions I was gonna ask with my hand up. I have no idea what that means. What? So please go ahead. And ad forward. Adjourning doesn't deal with the motion on the table for when it gets taken up again. Um, whereas a motion to postpone okay would indicate when it would get talked about again, definitely. You know, if we just adjourn, sure. it's okay. Up, okay, up to I the get it. Okay, so I chair. move to adjourn, uh, postpone this me uh, this discussion to the next council meeting. May I ask a friendly question? Knowing what the agenda for the next council meeting looks like, and it begins at five in the evening and goes through and three different meetings in it, would you consider a November 21st? No. No. No? Okay, fine. Um, could I ask a point of order? Yes. Next council meeting is technically the 5 p.m. reading session. Are you seeking the 8 p.m. regular council meeting? Yes, the regular council meeting. So the meeting. motion has been made to defer, to okay. postpone, postpone this conversation to November 7th at eight o'clock. Is there a second? No, I don't have it. Second. Yes. Is there any further discussion? Mandy Joe? No. Alicia? Is it not possible for us to like create another special meeting because I know the next council meeting has a really long agenda, but I also agree that 
the following council meeting is too far away, but can we create another meeting specifically for this? Is that a possibility? Um, I can look at that, Alicia. I, I will just tell you that when we polled to find the November 1st date, we looked at other possible meetings without interfering with other meetings and holidays, and there wasn't a date. And we went all the way out to the 14th of November. Mindy Jo. Yeah, I would just add, you need 48 hours notice. So Alicia, if you're trying to get this in before the 7th, the only day that's available that is not a weekend is Friday, now that it is Mon Wednesday morning. So, I mean, I, I'm more than willing to look for that and, and to poll for that. I just will want to warn you that I had trouble finding another date besides November 1st. Sorry, just to clarify, not before the next council meeting, before the one after that. Right. Let me, I will try. I will poll and look. Okay. Is that, I, and I agree that if possible, that would be a good idea. All right. Is there any other question? And I just want to say before you adjourn, I'm going to take this down. I am asking CSSJC, do you want to still remain in your meeting? We still need to vote on the motion to postpone. Thank you. We're going to vote on the motion to postpone. At this point, it's postponing to November 7th at 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, okay, and so is there any other question from the council about that? And then I'm gonna go to the leg road and ask the question. Okay, Pat DeAngelis? Uh, no. On Devlin Gother? No. Lynn Griesmer is a no. Mandy Johanneke? No. Anika Lopes. No. Michelle Miller. I'm sorry. I think I'm confused about what we're voting on. We're um, voting on whether to propose whether to postpone the motion that's on the floor to a date certain. And in this case, it is November 7th at eight o'clock. And I thought you just said that you would poll though. That's where I'm confused. What would the polling accomplish? Uh, and we, what Alicia has asked is if I could poll to see if there's another date besides that because the November 7th agenda already is very full. And oh. I agree to that, but meantime, we have it on November 7th. So if we don't postpone, if we vote no to postpone, then we're going to continue the discussion, even That's though Shalini, correct. but I thought that Shalini, oh, because she said that she wanted to postpone and not adjourn. Is that right. what happened? Okay. This point, it's postponed. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that, no. so let me clarify because I want to make <laughs> sure. Okay. If you vote no to postpone the discussion, then we continue discussing. Okay. If you vote vote yes to postpone, then we postpone to November 7th. On November 7th, if I was have it been able to find a date between November 7th and November 21st for us to meet as a council to discuss this motion, the motion on the table. Okay. Then on November 7th, I would make a motion to that other date certain or move it if I had to, to November 21st, but otherwise it will happen on November 7th at eight o'clock during the eight o'clock meeting. And how much time would you give us to, would you give us endless time on November 7th to debate I have, this? I have to look at the agenda, Michelle. I mean, it's, okay. Okay. You know, it's, it's now 1230 at night and nobody's thinking straight, 1232. Okay. Um, I mean, it's- so but I just heard four votes that are want to keep going right. with. So right now I have Pat DeAngelis is a no, Anna Devlin Gothers no, Lynn Griesmer's a no, Mandy Johanneke's no, and Nika's a no. Um, so Michelle. I'm a no. Dorothy Pam.
Dorothy. I think Dorothy is, is now absent. I don't see her. Pam Rooney. No. Kathy Shane. I really don't understand the vote because I can't possibly continue a discussion on this motion now. So then I would say your vote would be yes. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. No. Shalini Balmilm. Yes. So we have one, two, three, four in favor of postponement. Um, eight opposed to postponement and one absent. Alicia, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, I would like to propose a motion. Please go ahead. Um, to postpone this conversation to the next most, the next soonest agreeable date in consultation with the CSSJC. Like I want to be able to poll them as to when they're available. I don't want to just be like, you need to come to our 8 p.m. meeting. So can we postpone to a date, the soonest date where the CSSJC members and council members are available to be speaking about this together again? Please, Andy Joe, I'm gonna look at you for this one. It's to postpone to a date that we would poll for, for which the council and the CSSJC would both be available. So Paul's looking it up right now, but I believe motions to postpone are generally to a date certain, yeah. not an unknown date. Yeah, I, I think they are. Yeah, that's why I read the, the rule. So Alicia, the answer is but postponements are to a date certain. So can I just propose it as a motion and not a postponement? Can you as an adjournment? Can you propose it on the motion? It's yeah, just as a motion to find another time in agreement with the CSSJC to continue this conversation. No, because it needs to be postponed first. There's not a way to get consultation from the CSSJC as to when they are available at the soonest date for another meeting that isn't at 8 p.m. at our next meeting. Is there anybody that, Mandy Joe? go ahead. Wait, I think I know the answer. Did you say you don't have an answer? No, I think I know the the way would have been to do what what was just on the table, which was to postpone it to the to the meeting on the right. seventh, knowing that we weren't going to discuss it that night. But at that meeting, we would have found another date. Um, but because that motion failed, we're now continuing the discussion right, right now. And let's see on the motion on the uh, yeah motion. But somebody on the oh, there's no way right? to get their contribution right now as to what date they would be available, so we can postpone it to a date certain with their consultation, so that we know that they will be available for that meeting, to avoid the having to schedule it twice just to get a date that works for everyone. Good suggestion. Not really, unfortunately, because of Robert's the way that Robert's rules is written, you have to postpone to a specific date in the moment. Like we'd have to pick the date right now. Right. So but we can't I, allow them to talk with us right now. We're asking, but there's there's only D is not here and um uh no I'm here. I'm here. Oh, D is here. I think our committee is still here. It's just right. Okay, there is there is definitely four five of you here. I think one of your committee members is not. So are you available on November 7th at eight o'clock? For what reason? Well, it's actually for the purposes of the council continuing this discussion, which is one of the reasons why I'm not completely clear 
if the council has to continue the discussion and yet CSSJC isn't, uh, doesn't vote, um, if you weren't available and we wanted to continue the discussion and move on the motion, we could. So, I mean, I think that Allegra, please go yeah, ahead. I'm just, um, I'm thinking that we had a discussion and we've been sitting here listening to you deliberating about the vote and our input seemed to have been overlooked. And so if we're not gonna be able to vote or have discussion or be a part of, you know, an active part of the discussion, I don't know that it makes sense for us to be there. Um, okay. Can I suggest that one of the people who was on the prevailing side about the November 7th at eight o'clock ask to reconsider that motion? Yep, Mandy Zhao, please. Um, having voted on the prevailing side of no, I move to reconsider the motion to postpone the discussion on the motion that's on the table to November 7th. At eight o'clock. At 8 p.m. Eight o'clock p.m. Okay. okay. Rooney. Is there a second? Second, Rooney. Thank you. Now, the process that will take place is we'll see, I will poll to see if there's any other date, but otherwise it will be on November 7th unless someone else makes a different motion at that time. Alicia, so if you so, vote yes, we're postponing no. to... We this is a this pass. is a motion to reconsider, and then um, you'd have to vote. I'm sorry, on the we have to, we have to, to pass reconsider. the motion to reconsider, and then we revote the motion to postpone. Thanks. All right, this is if you vote yes, you're saying yes, we can reconsider. If you vote no, you're saying no, we're not going to reconsider the vote. And then once we determine that, then we actually revote if people enough people vote yes. Michelle. Um, hypothetically, if we vote to postpone to that date and then somebody on the council consults with the CSSJC to determine whether or not they would like to be involved in the next discussion and how, we could find a date with them to propose at the next meeting. That, no, okay. Just like Great. I did with the finance committee meeting. Okay. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Mandy Jo, you have your hand up? Okay, so the vote at this point is the vote that allows us to reconsider. It is not the vote to postpone. I'm going to start with Anna. No. Lynn is a yes. Mandy Jo. Yes. Anika. I'm sorry, could you say, are we voting to adjourn? We're, we're voting as to, as to whether you will reconsider the motion, not whether you uh, agree to the motion, but that you can just, you're willing to let us reconsider it. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Dorothy is absent. Pam. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Alicia. Yes. Shalini. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Sure. <laughs> okay, that passes uh, with uh, 11 in favor, one no, and one abs one absent. Now we're going to go back to the original motion. The original motion is to postpone the, this motion to November 7th at eight o'clock PM. Now we're voting on postponing, okay? Uh, Mandy, jo uh, 
I don't know. Is it Lynn is a yes. Bandy Joe. No. Anika. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just getting late. So are we, what are we voting on? Anika. This is the vote yeah. to postpone. Yes, thank you. Michelle. Yes. Dorothy is absent. Pam Rooney. Yeah. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shalini Balmilm. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. No. The, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine in favor, uh, three opposed, and one absent. Can can you say who was opposed? Yeah. I only have Devin only Goth have Devlin Gothier and Haneke. Yes, the opposition, the votes in not that were not in favor were Anna Devlin Gothier, Gothier, Mandy Jo Haneke, and Pam Rooney. The absent was Dorothy. Pam Rooney was a yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Then I have sounded like no to me. Thank you. I have my count wrong. It's 10 were yeses. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, you're correct. Okay. 10, 10 yes, yes, two, yes, no. One two absent. were no's. One was absent. Thank you. Okay. If there's no what, oh, now I'm going to ask does the CSSJC want to stay in session? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Can we take a vote? Um, let's see. Philip? Aye. Freka? Yes. D? Yes. Uh, I don't even, is Deborah still on? No. She's not on. Okay. Um, and Miss Pat? Yes. And I am a yes. Good night. 1243 CSSJC has adjourned. And I am just going to adjourn the council. Thank you. Night. Night. Thank you.